Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to learn about savanna, the savanna grassland biome. But before moving further, please like and subscribe to the channel, the Geoecologist, and you can follow us on the Instagram handle as well. So let's understand the etymology of the savanna, the word itself. So it comes from Spanish sabana, which means treeless plain so it's a plain area which is treeless that is the basic meaning of that word from early 1600 16th century and somewhere close to the middle european situation so in us it is specially in florida it was used as a tract of low lying marshy ground to refer in about 1700s so it was 1670s and 1700s where it was referred to as a tract of low lying marshy ground land so the word savanna has been used for different meanings by various scientists so some people also say it is a region it means now it's become pertaining to a particular location on earth surface so it is located as savanna region and it has been used by climatologists to indicate particular type of climate so tropical wet and dry climate that is according to the koppen's classification aw as savanna climate so while the botanists have used it for the classification of vegetation community of the tropical region so largely the vegetation community of tropical and subtropical if i may say is talking about the grassland area where the dominance of grasses is found so normally the savanna biome refers to that vegetation community of tropical or subtropical areas is characterized by dominance of grasses of ground cover and remember zero morphic it's zero phytic and zero morphic so zero morphic herbaceous plants apart from that scattered trees are there and also sparse shrubs are there so this is the basic composition if you look in the image this is the basic idea of the world distribution and also you can see through the photograph that how it looks this savanna biome extends in both the hemispheres somewhere close to about 10 to 20 degree latitudes including the llanos of colombia venezuela south central brazil guyana paraguay all in south american continent then what we have is the hilly areas of central america central and east africa maximum extent till sudan it goes and then northern australia so these are the certain areas major areas in the world if you look into the distribution map and also some parts in india as well we find this kind of biome in these particular region of the earth the savanna of india rather it's not original people say why is it not original because the natural vegetation cover has been removed by human interference and in then it has developed so it means naturally it was not there this grassland biome was not available naturally but due to human interference it got built so what happened due to clearing of original forest cover it resulted into the development of widespread man induced they say or human induced grasslands okay that's in the indian context now let's understand the origin and evolution of this type of biome okay so according to the majority of scientists the savanna biome is resultant of interference and modifications in the natural environment so remember two keywords interference and modification so what is this interference all about and modification it's about the human interference it's about human beings action in this particular region so it's talking about savanna region where human beings are associated so human activities such as deforestation frequent forest fires overgrazing of land by the pet the animals okay so that is according to the horticulture that people practice and also with that the animal rearing people practice so what happens there is grazing as well and also people want particular land areas for the fodder purpose so they clear forest also for the fodder purpose and also remember the intrusion through agriculture so what we see here is that there are clear cut evidences to demonstrate that savanna regions especially in indian context if we say have clearly originated and developed because of the deforestation of original forests by human beings so because indian savanna areas are found within 
the areas of deciduous forest remember in last lecture we discussed about the deciduous forest and human intervention so when they clear up then what happens the ground is dominated by the shrubs and grasses and there are fewer trees left so in that case this kind of biome is formed unlike other main savanna areas of the world indian savanna areas are dominated by shrubs and grasses now let's understand this particular structure that we say it may be concluded that savanna biome is the outcome of a set of complex factors it's not as simple as the other biomes so savanna is also studied widely throughout the world only because of this complexity of factors so what are those factors first is the characteristic feature of the climate very unique characteristic of the climate also sometimes referred to as geoclimate because it's linked to a particular geographic condition that's why then what we have here is geomorphic history of that particular area so geomorphology of the land the land surface the rock structure right these things matter here natural fires occur in particular ecosystems and that's why this area has lots of issues in terms of forest fires every year and what else evolution of grazing animals now this is where one major issue has come up from human intervention because natural grazing is different and human induced grazing is different as practiced and at last what you see here is the consequent impact of natural original vegetation removal and finally the presence of human beings in terms of his various economic and agricultural activities so these are the numerous factors that lead us to understand the outcome and what is the outcome the biome the savanna biome now let's understand the savanna's climate so climate in is characterized by basically distinct wet and dry spells of season so a distinct wet season and a distinct dry season in this particular area throughout the year so what happens here mean annual rainfall ranges between 250 to 500 mm it's about 25 to 50 cm of rainfall isn't it and basically this is on desert fringes so there is collaboration where two different biomes meet so remember on the fringes it is there and 1300 to 2000 mm that is about 130 to 200 cm rainfall where it borders with equatorial area so remember closer to equator more rainfall farther from equator less rainfall so that is how this operates somewhere when i say it is between 10 to 20 degree north and south of equator it means at about 20 degree it is more close to the tropic of cancer or capricorn so it has more subtropical or tropical condition and at 10 degree it has normally it is closer to the equatorial zone so it has large influence of the equatorial climate so temperature does not fall below 20 degree in any month of the year so remember the average temperature throughout the year is somewhere about 20 degree c across the months okay and there are three seasons on the basis of the combination of temperature and humidity that we need to remember that temperature and humidity is the major factor on which the three seasons are understood in this particular biome so what are those first is the cold dry season here the temperature is 26 degree to 32 degree c and falls down up to 21 degree c so remember not much of cool but yes cold dry season so there is no rainfall in this particular time period and then what we have is warm dry season so cold dry warm dry the temperature again is 32 degree c to 38 degree c and the last is the warm wet season so that is 80 to 90% where total rainfall occurs in the wet season as we see so larger areas is just varying somewhere between 20 degree to 30 degree c temperature in the entire distribution of this savanna biome vegetation community let's understand in this particular biome so the savanna vegetation community has developed layered structure okay wherein three distinct layers are clearly visible and they are well developed so what is that the first is the ground layer stratum what do you find on the ground grasses herbaceous plants and they are generally coarse stiff and hard so remember 
coarseness stiffness and hardness is the three important characteristic of these grasses and maximum they reach somewhere up to 350 cm but remember there are african elephant grass as well which vary up to 5 meters okay remember this particular african elephant grass leaves of these grasses are almost flat <clears throat> which are shed during dry season but they are regenerated during wet season the savanna grasses are usually tufted in structure and form so remember the basic characteristics of these grasses in the first layer that is the ground then what we see here is the middle layer that is shrubs layer okay so we have shrubs and also very stunted not very upgrown woody plants okay and the third is the top canopy layer which is dominated by the trees but they are very less in numbers in this particular biome the general characteristic of these trees depend upon the availability of water that is the moisture and the important point to remember is the trees are not very long as in equatorial rainforest or in tropical forests in deciduous forest the trees are very long but usually here the tree height is not that long it's somewhere between 6 to 7 meters precisely 6.12 meters is the height and the trees form flattened crown or canopy so crown or canopy is flattened but they are very sparsely distributed that is one phenomena that we need to remember so some of the savanna trees are fire resistant as well but remember unfortunately there are lots of fire incidents in this particular ecosystem but some plants are resistant to fire and they are called pyrophytic remember the terminology here is pyrophytic as they have thick bark and thick bud scales okay so they are fire resistant wood as well called pyrophytic now let's understand the importance of tree species and there are few examples so isoberly linea and then we have baobab then you have dom palm and then eucalyptus and some pine trees in honduras and other places are also found so these are the major names of these particular tree species so remember isoberlinia then you have baobab dom palm eucalyptus okay in australia specifically so these are the major dominant vegetations okay the net primary productivity is an average of 900 dry grams per square meter per year but it varies why because remember the domination one equatorial side and one is the tropical side so varies from 1500 dry grams to the minimum of 200 dry grams depending upon which side 10 degree side or the 20 degree side are we looking at so it depends upon the climatic regime the zones now on the basis of portion of trees and grassland and the structure of vegetation the savanna biome has been divided into four types so let's look at the four types depending upon the trees and grassland the first is called woodland savanna okay first type is woodland savanna the name itself is dominated by trees as it is woodland and this is also sometimes called closed savanna okay it has dense upper canopy so that is woodland savanna for you then tree savanna so first is woodland savanna then we have tree savanna representing relatively open vegetation okay as in the image also you can see this is largely tree savanna the ground cover is dominated by grasses and no tree canopy is developed so there is not much of development of tree canopy in this kind of tree savanna area then shrub savanna now the name itself is it is dominated by grasses and shrubs at the ground layer the second layer and the fourth one is grass savanna so what did we observe is right from the tree the woodland the tree then shrubs and the grasses so all the four types of different savannas in the entire world okay now the frequent fires both natural and anthropogenic fires that is remembering the inter, inter intentional basically annual burning of grasses by man so it is internationally present and intentionally present the burning of these shrubs and grasses why because what are we doing we are trying to change the regime through our economic for our economic benefits through agriculture so what is happening the fire appears to be normal part of savanna biome and one of the major factors and remember savanna is a delicate balance of climate because it is between equatorial and you know tropical so somewhere it has a delicate balance of soil vegetation animals and remember fire plays a major role fire is the key agent and that's why it is important to understand that why 
men have created the biome in this particular way using fire so that's where climatic climax that we say is the climax species as a product of human activity sometimes savanna biome is referred to as the product of human activity completely also okay so these are the important points that we need to remember in terms of human intervention now let's look at the animal community so what is happening different savanna areas have developed differently okay because of the variety in environmental condition so the first important point is the variety in environmental condition and the second is degree of human interference now animal population and its quality its variety its diversity say floral and faunal diversity has two factors one is environment factor one is human factor these two factors interplay and limit the presence of these particular animals so what do we see african savanna accounts for largest number and the greatest variety of grazing vertebrate mammals in the world so grazing vertebrate mammals okay in the world are highest in african savanna for example what do we have here is the east african savanna carries 40 species of very large herbivore mammals like african buffalo zebra giraffe elephants and many types of antelopes and hippopotamus okay so remember this particular point here the australian savanna rather is this dominated by marsupials what are marsupials they are typical mammals of south america and australian region having pouch in their body so i know that you already know the example those are kangaroos 50 species of kangaroo in the australian savanna are found and remember the large grazing mammals of south american savannas include also deer and guanaco so besides toucans parrots night jars kingfishers doves finches parakeets woodpeckers so many varieties of birds are also found in savannas now let's look at this seasonal characteristics of mobility basically the migration okay and you remember the earlier ecosystems that we talked the earlier biomes did not have so much of migration of species okay seasonal characteristic was not that dominant but here it is dominant so what happens the five categories let's understand so what is the first category where animals with little or no seasonal movement so who are those animals giraffe grass gazelle and hearty beast these are three important animals which do not move much then what we have is partial movement partial mobile animals are like impala then what we have here is animals with partial movement during wet season specifically so when there is wet season then they move there are warthog then you have tiktik water buck rhino and then animals migrating during dry season such as buffalo zebra wild beast elan elephant so you see a variety exists here in terms of the migration and the fifth one is animals used to passage migration so large scale migrations also happen sometimes in buffalo zebra and elephant so you can see on the wildlife channels like national geographic and discovery you must have seen this huge amount of movement and that is where the grassland biomes you see in africa or australia or south america you'll find such then now let's talk about at the end of the session about the human and savanna biome what is our role what we have done so the regular burning of vegetation is the first important point why because remember human beings need food and they practice agriculture so what happens the rapidly increasing human population will have more number of mouths to feed so agricultural lands are being made and by clearing by burning all those particular lush green grasses and grasslands are being completely shattered the luxuriant growth of trees are now completely gone and some areas it's almost plain agricultural fields now so the rapid rate of expansion in the agricultural lands under new schemes of green revolution also led to vast amount of destruction of this particular biome and furthermore enormous increase in the number of domesticated animals now see this biome has natural vegetation and also natural animal composition what did humans action lead to the domestication of animals and also leaving aside marginalizing those population of the wild animals so many a times in this particular biome there have been examples of the incidents where wild animals have ventured into the human settlements because of this particular reason 
So what did we observe today? Let's understand in nutshell, the impact of human activities has resulted in the shrinking of the areas of this grassland specifically and the reduction of natural vegetation which have caused shortage of food supply for the wild animals. Now what else? All these have ultimately adversely affected the animal communities and they are at st stake and the endangered li list every year it's expanding and what's happening consequently the number of animal species and their total population are gradually decreasing. So this is about the savanna biome, its characteristics, its distribution and its issues of adaptation and the related problem of human interaction, human intervention and the destruction. So thank you for watching and subscribing to the Geocologist. We are coming up with more lectures on biomes. So please stay safe, stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you so much.